Hi, and welcome to week eight of uh, the MLB season. This is going to be your fab picks between myself, uh, Dap Scout on Twitter, uh, JP, and then, of course, my partner in crime here, Jason Beckner. You can have him at JR Bex. Hey, Jason, how's it going today? What's going on, JP? Hey, well, so, yeah, we're changing it up a little bit. I, I, I decided to duct tape you. I, I was going to do the intro today. I'm going to screw it up. I don't have the nearly the voice that you do, sir. So I, I'm going to try here. You have the articulation, though. We'll go with that. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever you want to say. <laughs> um, as always, we're bringing we're brought to you by FantasySixPack.net. Please stop by Fantasy Six Pack uh, and look at all of our membership options because, look, you want to become a full access member because you get access to me, you get access to Jason, you get access to our free agent article that's been killing it the last couple of weeks. Uh, now, we are going to just go over a couple names here. And then the article itself has over 40-something names the last couple of weeks. I don't know what's going to have this week, but we we go deep. And then, of course, the best part is the Dap Scout Pick of the Week because that has really been taking off, except for this last week when I gave somebody to just look out for that's going to be coming up on the waiver wires as well. We have our Discord. We have our most accurate rankers, I mean, you know, by Fantasy Pros. So definitely there's a lot of good value there as well. So please sign up for your memberships because that pays Jason and I's salary and we like to get paid. Um, (laughs) End of day. So let's dive in, Jason, unless I missed something on my very first intro. Anything that I missed no. up? Okay, no. good. Here's a pat on the back because that was a great job. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. All right. So our first guy is Nolan Gorman. Now, funny story about Nolan. I tried desperately to trade him and bundle him in about 30 different trade packages on the offseason. Um, you know, he was pretty much considered to be a part time player, if at best. Uh, he's going to be in a short side platoon. That's what everybody thought. And he has just gone out and just done what the Cardinals always do. <laughs> and they turn something, they find some switch and they flip it. Uh, Nolan Gorman's been killing it. And the reason why we are talking about him uh, on this show is because he's not at a hundred percent owned. And I just don't understand that. Uh, we've, we've featured him a few times and he's just still killing it and you need to own him. If he's on waivers for any reason, you need to make room. I guarantee you, whoever's on your bench is not as good as Nolan Gorman, unless you have like the shallowest league possible. Jason, any good points about Nolan that we're missing out on? Not much. Only the thing that we need to mention is that for some reason, he's still available in 40% of leagues for some reason. It needs to be at least 90, like I said, if not a hundred percent. Right. Killing it. Got an OPS over a thousand, 12 home runs, top five in the league. He's yeah. got multi home run games. The power's for real. Um, he should not be available in your league. Get him. I don't care if you, who you have to drop. And for those people that have him available, please let me know how to enter your league. Um, I would love to join the leagues. That just let Nolan Gorman sit on the waiver. We're going to continue to spotlight one of these players that's under owned. We're not going to go deep into him like Nolan Gorman this week. Um, you know, every week now, just to really kind of beat the drum. Hey, we featured this person per- previously. No one's listening to us. Go out, go get them. Seriously, go out and go get them. Um, all right. So to actually go to one of our actual waiver wire picks um, of the week that we haven't featured before is Brian Dela Cruz. Now, in his last five games, Mr. Marlin, because every time I think of the Marlins now, I think of Brian Dela Cruz for some reason. Even though I know he's not one of the the big guys, I just Brian Dela Cruz is such a Marlin to me for some reason in my head. Um, the last five games, 500 average. I mean, nine for 18. How beautiful is that? Three doubles, two home runs, six runs scored, and a immaculate 1.571 OPS. That's uh, on base percentage plus slugging. So, you know, anything above 900 is incredible. So, if 1.5 is really good, um, you know, one of the things that we were always kind of worried about again was. Uh, kind of with Norland Gorman as well, right? Is he going to be able to play? Is he going to get, you know, the the at, the at bats? And of course, he's a really streaky player. He's just always been. Um, you need to go out and get him. And if anything, right, especially if you're in a weekly league, have him available if somebody hits the, you know, gets hurt. But right now, he's so hot. Right now is the time to Paris Hilton. Right, it's hot, so hot. Uh, to go get him and uh, put him in your lineup because uh, you definitely he's he's hitting for power he's hitting for average yeah he's hitting it for everything. Uh, Jason, what do you, what do you think about Mister uh, Mister Marlin? Yeah, no, I think you know a lot of good points on the head, and and this actually goes you know if you look back to this, even in twenty twenty two, he ended the year with a great stretch. That's true. Out. That's a great point. Over three ten last year, 
seven home runs, 11 doubles in the, in the second half. So this is not something like all of a sudden where this guy came out of nowhere, right? He kind of did per- surplant himself last year in the end of 2022. Starting to show it again. He hits in the middle of that lineup. Right. So the RBIs that are going to be there for him. Um, yeah, I mean, this guy is going to, you know, you're going to provide RBIs in the middle of the lineup. And, yeah, I mean, just go grab him. Especially, especially in like four and five outfielder leagues. Yeah, so no reason exactly. To be on the on the bench, on the, on the uh, waiver. Yeah, if, if you're in a, if you're in a league with four or five outfielders, which I'll be honest with you, is one of my I, I'm in a bunch of those, and I hate those yeah. leagues because it yeah. just feels like I'm like you don't realize how shallow outfield becomes real quick. Yeah. Um, you definitely need to have Brian Dela Cruz on your team. All right, so Mickey Moniak, and that's our next guy up. And so anybody who's played Dynasty before. Um, or we're still playing Dynasty, hopefully you're still playing Dynasty, uh, you'll know Mickey's name because he was a touted prospect in the Philly system there for a while. Um, you know, definitely somebody that I expected, you know, who's kind of expected to, you know, hit for power. And he was, he was up there, uh, you know, in the prospects. I, I can't remember if he was top 100, but definitely was always in the conversation as somebody we need to, to look at. And when he went up to Philly, you know, he didn't do much, um, you know, but the thing is, is people forget how young he was. I mean, he was in the Gulf Coast League at 18. Um, and then he made his very first cup of coffee at 22. And and then he and now he's with the Angels. And, you know, the Angels aren't exactly known for fixing prospects. Joe Adele. <clears throat> but, um, you, know, some, you know, Mickey has suddenly, you know, caught fire here. Um, and he's not hitting cheapies. Uh, you know, he's up with the majors now. But at Triple A this year. Uh, he had, uh, let's see what we got here. We got eight home runs, 23 RBIs. But the thing was, he really kind of kept his strikeouts under control. And that's, you know, always been kind of the, the tale of two cities with him, right? You know, he was, he was batting 355, 585 slugging, which of course gives you 939 OPS. Um, 308 average. So obviously OBP is going to be much better for this guy than that. Uh, the majors now, uh, he's only had five games, but video game numbers, which of course should come down at 438 on base percentage and an 800 slugging. The one thing I want to highlight before I kick it over to you, Jason, for some uh, insight here is his last home run uh, that he hit off Dean Kramer uh, three days ago, right? Again, Wood it Dong, one of my favorite Twitter uh, things to follow. Uh, but he hit a ball that would have been a home run in 29 parks out of 30, which is pretty amazing. Uh, 105 exit velocity. Uh so we're not talking about a guy who's just hitting little cheapies, right? This this guy has legitimate power, and the Angels need help. They're they're looking for somebody to step up behind Otani and Trout, and of course we've you know we've had little people pop up here and there, right? You know they they have the names there, but the consistency they're looking for it. So Mickey definitely has a place in that lineup. Jason, are you picking him up? Yeah, I think so. I mean, this is a guy that was a former first overall pick, so. The hype and the pedigree was there with Moniac, right? I mean, the, the Phillies thought of him as the number one overall pick. So obviously, they saw something that we maybe didn't. Because I think I remember in that year, like the most dynasty has remember, he was not a consensus number one overall pick. But hey, that's right. in the past. We're in the future. We're in the present now. Um, right. He's on the Angels, he's providing you know a little bit of power. Should also provide steals as well. I mean, not you know off the page numbers, but I mean, I mean, I know a lot of people are stealing bases, but anywhere you can get him is great. Um, I'm definitely grabbing him. Similar to Brian De La Cruz, you know, those little bit deeper leagues, the four or five outfielder leagues, you should absolutely be available in your league. You should be getting him off the waiver. Absolutely. All right. So to the pitching side of the – now, before I talk about pitchers, what in the world is going on this season? I, it feels like this season pitchers are more prone to get injured than any other season. I mean, you know, there's obviously the big rash of – Tommy John's that happened maybe the last year and the year before it seems like, but this year just seems like everything is breaking down on pitchers. And, you know, some people might be blaming the pitch clock. Um, other people might be blaming some other areas, but right. it's, it's never too early to look, even if you have a healthy and if you do, you know, I would definitely rub a rabbit's foot, but uh, it's never too early to look for an additional pitcher somewhere. And a blast from the past, James Paxton, is uh, up next here. Now, one of my favorite little tidbits before we get into stats and all that fun stuff, right, is, uh, you know, it's come up a lot. And uh, Nesson, right, N-E-S-N, um, is bringing it up right now. So I love it. Uh, so 2018. 2018 season was magical, James Faxton, because he threw a no-hitter. Um, and he had a lot of, you know, he threw a no-hitter in Canada. First Canadian pitcher to ever throw a no-hitter in Canada. Some trivia there. 
But the thing that everybody remembers, and if you don't, then go to Twitter right now and just type in James Paxton. You'll see it everywhere. Is one of the games, you know, they bring out these animal trainers all the time, right? And they do all these different things. They had a bald eagle trainer come out. And, you know, the bald eagle is supposed to go out, circle, and come back. You've seen it a thousand times probably. Yep. Well, this particular bald eagle said, you know what? You're not patriotic enough, and I'm going to go to James Paxton. And one of the best, like, dude moments, like, James Paxton's got his hat over his heart. This bald eagle comes up, and James like, nope. And then the bald eagle, like, stops. <laughs> Wait for the guy, and you're like, oh. and bald eagle's like, nope. I need to be with you, James. <laughs> it jumps on his back. And James is like, dude, what is going on here? And if you've seen a bald eagle up close, those things could have like seven foot win- wingspans. They're, they're not small. So kudos to him for having a really awesome moment where it could have obviously gone badly, like, you know, showing off, you know, an American icon or something like that. So I will always give James Paxton kudos there. So beyond that, sorry, let me get back to the actual stuff that's happening with James Paxton. Um, so He's back, uh, you know, um, he's back and he's in another, you know, he's, he's a Seattle, uh, you know, he's not with the Seattle. It's weird. He's with Boston and he looks like he's not injured anymore. Um, what are you seeing here, Jason? Because uh, I'm kind of excited. Yeah, same. You know, when we were looking up some names and some people that might be available on your waiver wire. James Paxton's name crossed, came across the list, and I, I keep replaying in my head that Star Wars meme where it's like Obi-Wan. It's like, that's a name that I haven't heard in a long time. <laughs> yes. Yeah, he's had, he's healthy now, uh, for now. You know, he has made his first appearance last week in over two years. Yeah. Um, so definitely it's a name that, you know, you may have forgotten about. But he pitched five innings this week. He had nine Ks, only one walk. And his low mistake really only came in that first inning when he, you know, laid up fastball down the middle of the Arenado and gave up that home run. But Right. Velocity was solid, reached upper 90s. They kind of, you know, eased him along, only gave him the five innings. And hey, if this guy can stay healthy, he's going to provide strikeouts, good ratios. He's on Boston. Boston's offense is good. He should be able to get some wins in there as long as he can continue getting those five, six innings. And hey, if, if like, like we talked about at the beginning of the segment, if you need pitching, grab it while you can because it's dwindling at the, every week. It seems like more and more dwindling away and away. So, Definitely, I'm all in on James Paxton until he, you know, prayed up that he stays healthy because this guy was, again, one of those top tier strikeout pitchers before he got hurt. The other thing, too, right? I don't think anybody's pushing him for that rotation spot. I think they're, you know, Red Sox are bad ish. I mean, yes, you said the offense is good, but, you know, I think they're kind of, you know, mid tier uh, with their record. I don't think anybody's going to be pushing him off there. So I think it's, you know, his rotation spot, which is, again, huge right now. Uh, having somebody have a pretty solid rotation spot. So as long as he's healthy and, you know, he's not putting meatballs anywhere, I, I think he has that rotation spot for a while. So, yeah, I think that's a good pickup, definitely. All right. So to our AL Central brethren, uh, we're not talking about, uh, you know, Italian breakfast. We're not talking about anything fun, you know, those kind of fun names. We're talking about another, uh, you know, infield guy here, Nick Prado. Now, Nick Prado comes up and it, I don't know the Royals to me are just, they seem really kind of like they don't realize they're supposed to be just terrible. You know, uh, it's almost like they're just like, yeah, we're having too much fun. Um, you know, Nick Prado since coming up from uh, Omaha, okay. Royals farm report has this fantastic tidbit. I, I, I got to share this. So yeah. the Royals are seven and seven are averaging 5.7 runs per game. And they have the best win WR, C plus in the major league, which the last couple weeks was 134. Now, if you don't know what WRC plus is, right, um, 100 is pro- about, you know, is about good ish, right? 90, 100. You know, 134 is insane. Um, and for, again, for the Royals who aren't supposed to be doing much, uh, they're, they're just out there having fun. And Nick Prado, you know, Again, going back to kind of the the Mickey Moniac thing, right? He's not hitting cheapies. I mean, the, you know, he hit a bomb off Lance Lynn. I know it's Lance Lynn, but, you know, it's not the Lance Lynn of five years ago, right? But he hit this bomb off Lance Lynn that I'm, I'm just looking up the stats right now because it's just, it was just something amazing. It was a, a, it was a two-run bomb. It was his second home run. It was 12th RBI of the season at the time. And he's just he's just still stacking up those numbers. And he hit it 105 miles an hour. I mean, just great power hitter, 
somebody who's going to obviously stay with the Royals for a while, while and he's just going to have fun. You know, Pasquatino, you got, you got, you got, uh, you got a very fun lineup there at the Royals. I, and again, when you talk about power right now, it's, it's not deep. And, you know, it's not, you know, there's a lot of good power hitters and then it kind of just real quickly. So to have somebody that's not doing the, um, Oh man, what is that guy's name? I just went blank. Oh, what what's our friend's name that only hits a hundred uh, for the Rangers? Um, Gallo. He's not a Gallo. This guy's actually going to put some uh, wood on the ball. So, anyways, go. Please tell me some more about Nick Prado because I am amazed by him. Yeah, no worries. Uh, yeah, no. I mean, this is a guy that's still only twenty four years old. Um, still only has like under three hundred plate appearances in the major league level. Some things I would caution you with about. And he's still striking out thirty percent of the time. Yep. And a lot of success right now is is due to his almost 500 bad bet right now. So yeah. just throw caution to the wind here. I'm not saying not to pick him up, but don't expect to pick him up and he's going to be getting on base and you know, continuing this hot streak going forward. But, again, for a 24-year-old power hitting first baseman, it's going to provide, again, the home runs, the RBIs. Absolutely. If you need those type of categories in your leagues right now, definitely go out and grab Nick Prado. I don't know. You know, first baseman sometimes can be hit or miss. A lot of these guys here, so yeah, absolutely. For a first baseman replacement, um, you know, for maybe if you lost like uh, Reese Hoskins or something at the beginning of the year, Nick Prado is definitely out there on your waiver wire. Yeah, and he's uh, also you know he's outfield eligible as well, so you know that's always great. So I'm going to ask you, um, you know, that's a great point, right? He's got an inflated BABIP, right? Uh, it seems like that's everywhere now. But with yeah. with with these you know with these young guys, these rookies especially, you know, is is to what level are you giving growing pains? Like, I mean, if he, he's obviously going to hit a cold streak at some point, yep. everybody does. Right. Um, uh, like what point do you get worried when you see a cold streak happen? Is it like after a week where you, he goes, Oh, four, uh, you know, or, you know, has one hit like they you know, do, or do you go two weeks? When, when do you are like, Nope, that was great. I had the hot streak and I'm out. Yeah. I mean, it, especially with the rookies, I try to have a little bit shorter release, especially in the shallower league. However, you know, if he's still drawing walks, Making a lot of hard contact, um, you know. We, I've like I said, the bad bit's a little bit elevated now because of the ban of the shift. But some of these younger guys, if they're still drawing walks, they're still making hard contact, just getting a little bit of obviously opposite of Nick Prado, where you're getting you know a little bit of lower bad I'm gonna give them a little bit of longer leash. But if there's better available options out there, I will not I will not hesitate to drop um, someone like a like a Nick Prado or some of these rookies that are coming up and they hit some cold streaks because. It's like, right again. Baseball is streaky. There's always gonna be streaks. Even the even the superstars go through cold and hot streaks. You got to know when to attack and when to you know know when to hold them and know when to fold them. Right. Absolutely. All right. So um, I, it, this one kind of scares me. I'm gonna be honest with you, uh, Matthew Libertor. The reason why it scares me is I always get worried when the Rays trade somebody. Yep. Um, because um, they just seem to never mess up on trades. And so the fact that Matthew Libertor was traded by the Rays, I'm immediately like, what's wrong with him? Yeah. Um, <laughs> but, you know, Matthew didn't exactly blow the doors off anybody, right? He, he seemed to, ha- you know, he got blown up a lot. So you're like, man, the Rays won that deal by far. Um, you know, no issues there. But he also got traded to the Cardinals and the Cardinals don't mess up a lot either when it comes to pitching, especially right. They're like the Atlanta Braves of pitching as well, or Atlanta's like the Cardinals of the pitching, whatever, Uh, you know? (laughs) So, you know, Matthew's got a bunch of people around him as well. A lot of veterans and, you know, he has, um, he went from one veteran catcher to another as well. But the thing that, you know, and this is coming from Lance's notes um, and this is Lance, um, Brozdowski, uh, Lance Bros on Twitter. Um, one of the things that he's done, and now this might be just, you know, you get it called up and you got a lot of adrenaline, but his his uh, velocities yeah. spiked up. And, you know, we saw he's almost two miles an hour faster than he was in AAA last year where he was getting destroyed. <laughs> and as everybody knows, right, you start, you're against major league hitters and even just that one tick of velocity, we're talking about two ticks here, but w- one tick of velocity can start making stuff that was, you know, getting hit to now being swing and miss stuff. And suddenly, you know, we, we're, we're talking about a whole different picture and he looks like a whole different picture. Again, we don't have a long track record at the moment, but he's 23 and a lot of people wrote him off. I mean, he, like I said, he was getting absolutely murdered um, in, well, I mean, he, he's walking for uh, an inning in 2022. He's only striking out seven, you know, seven batters. That's not going to get it done. 
And on top of, you know, on top of that, he was allowing like 15% home runs. I mean, you, you can't live by that. Yeah. So all that adds up to a really bad life. I think it was like five point something ERA last year as well. So yeah, all that, all that to say he was a top prospect. Everybody wanted a piece, you know, everybody saw, you know, what was happening there and then Tampa Bay traded him, and he also got hurt. Right. Don't get me wrong. He also got hurt, but I immediately was like, mm, Tampa Bay never loses a trade. Except it's Cronworth and you know, a handful of other ones. Are you going to go against the Tampa Bay jinx? And are you picking up some Libertor? I think just similar how we talk about packs and at some point, you know, you got to start rolling the dice on some of these guys that are available on your waiver, just because the, the market's kind of shrinking. But again, yeah, this is like going back to what you're talking about. The trades, the Rays trading him away. The, and at the time, they traded him for a, almost an unknown Randy Rosa Reina, right? Everyone's like, who? oh, my God. Who? Who? Oh, Randy, who? Yeah, Sandy. what are the Rays doing? What are the Rays doing? They're trading away one of their top pitching prospects for some outfielder in the Cardinals organization? What are they doing? Is he any good? Randy, yeah. what? Yeah, really good. And that just goes to show you what the Rays are doing. They find these guys, and they know what they're looking for. Right. Uh, and they basically pull them over. But however, they're now Mike starting to get a little bit of payment in return. <laughs> or uh, not equivalent, but might start seeing a little bit of some, some receiving some payment. But yeah, I think one good call, which I was shocked by, was the velo in his first start. Right, it reached up to ninety eight basically. Right. I don't know if he's ever been that high. Um, he did have a twenty six percent chase rate in that first first appearance. Um, Marmol's come out and said he will stick in the rotation for now. Um, so I mean, if you need the, the pitching, however, like you said, I would be. Op, uh, cautiously optimistic with Libertor. Right. Uh, only features right now. I mean, he has a four pitch mix, but he relied very heavily on that fastball curveball right. mix, which always scares me when a pitcher only features two pitches, especially a young pitcher sure. that is trying to make his you know th- you know his fill a spot in rotation and make him uh, his name known. Two pitch mm-hmm. pitches always scare me. I'm not sure right. Kevin Rossman, but um, for now, so, but I mean, the 95 plus. So I mean, like you know, if he's in 95 plus, you can get away with a lot, right? right? Especially with the movement that he has. But yeah, you're absolutely right. I mean, two pitches at some point are going to burn you unless he's you know throwing at least something to keep uh you know if it goes. I'm not sure if you know he throws in that third pitch to keep the lefties um, honest or the righties. I, I can't remember how the other things break on his pitches, but you always need that third pitch to work for the other handed pitchers. But I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. Go ahead. No, no, no. Good point. Yeah, I mean, he was he was working the. The fastball away because he's lefty and then to the righties yeah. and then okay. the slider into the righties. So he was kind of jamming him with that slider. And, and honestly, I don't know. You know, a lot of times these pitch the hitters don't know what they're going to see from him because they his his CSW on the fastball alone was over thirty percent, which is kind of shocking to me on a fastball. <laughs> right, right. right. Um, but yeah, I mean, like I said, if you need some pitching, I would definitely roll the dice on Libertor. Um, I don't know who they don't really know who's going to. They haven't announced who's going to start against next. Right, but. I would at least be willing to gamble at least one or two more starts and see until, until he can prove that he's going to fail. Uh, I'll right. see him out there. So I'm going to just, this, this is my only word of caution for all you fantasy people out there. If you, you know, that's corner of advice um, with a, with a player like this, I would pick him up, but I would not start him at least for another start or two. I would see how those starts go, but at least you have them there. Cause if he takes off, you know, waiver wires are going to go crazy or than they are now for them. But at least you have them sitting there. I would probably wait. That's me, right? I'd probably wait a start or two unless you obviously need the starts or you have some other type of thing pushing you. Um, because if that velocity stays there or even just a little bit up or a little bit down, just, you know, right in that kind of that happy zone, then, you know, bombs away, start them again. But I would at least for me, I, I I have picked him up, but I don't know if I'm going to start him just yet. I'm going to wait probably one more start just to make sure because we've seen the we've seen the bad of Libertor, and I that's a that's a huge that's that's not a you know a funny flo- you know floor. It's a deep nasty floor. Yeah, that's you know, good, Paul. It's almost like a a streaming option off of your bench, right? You don't stream. There you go. You stream off your bench. Yeah. So we go from somebody who, yeah, I don't know if I'm going to start him just yet, to a guy that, if I swear, this this person in particular, it kills me. He's not 100% owned in particular. <laughs> because the problem is we called him out last time. And um, I'm not, well, not, we yeah, knock, knock on wood. I'm trying to find wood here. Uh, then he got hurt, like, I think the next day. Yeah. I think when we released the article, he got hurt. Yeah. Um, and Jake Berger with the White Sox, 
Eric Cross, of course, is amazing with prospects, but he has one of the best tweets for yesterday. So since coming from the IL, <laughs> listen to the three games he's had. Two for four, home run. Two for four, home run. Three for four, home run. For this season, 89 plate appearances, 278, 347, 348, 747 slugging percentage. But the best part, right, is that, I mean, the his barrel rate is like, 26 percent now he chases everything uh he whiffs a lot but with a 52 percent ish you know hard hit rate yeah um and you know Eloy's gonna get hurt probably he'd probably get you know again he's gonna come back he's gonna get hurt again and he probably got re-hurt i mean this is Eloy right Mm -hmm. Uh, so I don't think he's going anywhere. This is somebody that you need to get on a 10 team league. I mean, you know, we talk about like, yeah, it'd be great. This is, you know, I don't care the size of your league. Burger needs to be on your team. Just done. Uh, I'm sorry, Jason. Uh, this is a particular guy. Uh, make this one here. I'm going to put my foot down. You need to have a well done burger on your team. I'm sorry. Go ahead, sir. Please tell me some more good stuff. That's a couple more things to tell about. He is available in 80% of leagues. He has, he has 10 home runs, which ranks in like the top like 15 or 20 of the league, but he has a hundred less plate appearances. That's what I say. There you go. He is hitting home runs at an alarming rate, which I guess there will be regression. However, the power right. is real. This is a guy that was drafted 11th overall and then off, obviously suffered back to back Achilles injuries, which is taking some time for him to recover. From. Obviously, the Achilles tendon is a very I was about to say, is that, I mean, I, I remember doing an injury thing uh, with, uh, you know, I, I, uh, earlier, but uh, is the Achilles tendon an important tendon? I'm not a doctor, but I'm pretty sure it's pretty important for baseball. <laughs> I think it's important for, like, life. <laughs> like, yeah. It's pretty integral. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, he's coming up this year, and he's done nothing but prove that he can hit, hit for power. Right. Um, he, sh- he should not be available in 80% of leagues right now. It's actually shocking. We, we called him out three weeks ago when, when he was doing well. He's back healthy again, still performing right. the way he was three weeks ago. He's been performing like this all year. You need him on your league or on your team. And, and if he's in your available in your league, you absolutely need to be grabbing him. So again, we thank you so much for watching. Uh, you know, we we're lucky to be able to just talk to you all about this stuff, but you can reach out to us on Twitter. Um, please become a member of check out fantasy six pack.net. And look at our membership plans because you can also come to our Discord. And again, Jason and myself and so many other of our analysts are on there all the time answering our members' questions. And, and frankly, it's one of my, fun, you know, the most fun I get <laughs> throughout my day is when the pe- people ask me like some really in-depth question, like a member, and they're like, here's my entire, you know, lineup. I, I'm in third place. Tell me what I can do. And it ends up being like a good hour-long discussion. I love those things. Um <laughs> Yeah, and J- Jason, Jason has done some great insight work on, on some of those things. So um, from both of us, thank you so much for watching. Jason, any uh, last uh, last words? See you next week.